Lord, the Holy Spirit has given you and go do something with them and not sit on them. Amen? So, like I said, we've been uh, welcome for being here. It's so awesome. I'll keep this short and simple. Is anybody hungry or going to be hungry? Because we got good food coming on the way, but I'm going to feed you with God's food right now. Is that okay? Uh, so I, we have, I have a saying that I say, come hungry, but leave filled with God's love. All right, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill you with God's love right now. Amen? So if we, we're in a series called Root It. And the first week we talked about rooting ourselves in uh, sharing the message to God, uh, of God, bringing it to whoever and everybody that you come into. And just by talking and having conversations and not over being overwhelming and overbearing with the message. But it, the message is that Jesus' life, that he died, that he was resurrected, and, he became, and then because of that, he has washed us clean. And now because of that, we are ambassadors to bring that to the world. And last week, we talked about rooting our faith, uh, uh, our lives in faith, and that if we root our lives in faith, so you guys singing about the trust of God. That's the faith that we have, with knowing that our God is going to take us through the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? That we can put our faith in God anytime and anywhere, and how that faith can transform our lives to help others and to bring honor and glory to God, amen? So this week, though, we're going to talk about the beauty of the church, the beauty and the purpose of the church, and the joy of being rooted in community. See, I mentioned pastors being here today because I, I don't know if you guys know, Impact stands for something. It's not just the name that I came up with. Impact actually stands for involve many people and create teamwork. And I truly believe a community needs churches and needs businesses and needs people. And, and it needs people being together and impacting each other and making teamwork to bring out into the community to change the world. And so having other pastors in our, in our church, God's church, together is a big deal to me because it's showing unity. It's showing community. And, and we do the same to them when they're having something cool happening. And, and it's awesome to be able to partner with other community leaders in the church, in the community. So do me a favor, though. Stand. We're going to read God's word. And then pray real quick. It comes from John, 1 John 1, 7. And I won't be preaching off of this, but this is basically what community is about. And I'm going to be, and we'll talk about that. It says, but if we are living in the light, meaning in, in faith in Jesus, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. So if we all believe in the same thing, we all can have fellowship together. With each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all the sin. And Lord, so, Father God, I ask that your light just shines upon us today, Father God. Shines upon our soul, our spirit, our mind, our ears, our attitudes. And Lord, I pray that the blood of Jesus just washes us clean here today, Father God, so we can take your light into a dark world, Father God that we can be your hands and feet into communities, into the byways and the highways, Father God, in places that need to hear your message, but nobody is being sent there to go, Father God. Lord, send us, bring us, show us, give us the opportunity to go preach your word to people that need hope, Father God. I thank you for the last six years, Lord, that we've been able to impact people's lives, but that's only because of what your son, the light, has done for us. So, Lord, fill this room, fill the other side of the room with the children, with your light, your love, your mercy, your grace, your kindness. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. 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 You guys can have a seat. I have a friend right now, Danielle, in California, which I'm a little jealous of, because there's, there's, there's a forest out there, and it's called the Redwood Forest. You guys ever seen pictures of that? Can you guys show? So these trees are monstrous, like literally monstrous. Like you could look up and just, they go for miles. And they're not, they're beautiful. The picture that I'm showing you does not do it nearly justice. I mean, you can drive through some of them that they, they're that big and the roots that big. And I would love to see them someday. But the reason I'm showing you a picture of this because like I said, some of them are 300 feet high They've been around for 2,500 years or longer. 
but we've been talking about being rooted, rooted in faith, rooted in, 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 in God. And you would think a tree that monstrous, the roots would be really deep and really, right? Because I talked about the first week that we have to have deep roots to, to, and, and believe in the word and have the word in us, right? And the, those roots have to go deep to be sturdy, right? But that's not the case with these trees. The root system in these trees is not deep. What it, what it is, is they intertwine. Intertwine somebody's arm. Oh, you guys are actually doing it, good. Stand up, I, I just thought of it. Stand up. When they're in, 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 it's hard to move them, right? I can't, it's hard to break that when they're intertwined, right? So these big monster trees, they're, it, they're, the root system's intertwined. So when the big winds come, California have big winds, and then fires sometime, and right, they have all kinds of craziness, right? And when that happens, they don't get pushed over because they're rooted together. They're rooted in community. They're rooted into life together to help each other and support each other. And that's truly what I believe the church is supposed to do. See, every one of us is vital to the church. It's not just Pastor and Tracy, it's each and every one of us. They run the tech over here. We got people that sing over here. We've got children's ministry. We have outreach ministries, right? They're all vital to running the church, to helping a community. Does that make sense? And we're all designed for fellowship. We were not meant to do life alone. That's why God made man and woman. That's why God made animals, male and female. Right? We were supposed to, he made us to have fellowship, not just with him, but companionship, friendships, fellowships to, to do life with. And so I got just a couple points today. My first point is to know and play your part. To know your role and to play your part. So know and to play your part. And um, I'm, I'm going to be reading from... Uh, uh, the book of Romans in a second and Paul writes his book and he understood the value of living in community so in the book of Romans he encourages the church to go play its part in the family of God his words are they're, they're helpful and they're insightful and they're not just for then they're helpful and insightful now in in this world at this time so uh, just kind of the, the words are on your on your your notes they're also be on the screen. If you guys don't know, we are a Bible preaching church. I don't make things up. I, I preach from his word. Why? Because I want you guys to know the truth. And we truly believe in the word of God is infallible for teaching, rebuking, and to bettering your life. Amen? So he comes from Romans. It says, uh, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. So he's warning them about something. He says, don't think you are better than you really are. How many of us like to put ourselves first? And I'm better than that person. And that person does this, so I'm better. That's not who we are. We're all one in Christ, and we're all fallible. He's the only one who's not. That's why I can put my total trust in him. Amen? So he says, be honest in your evaluation of ourselves. Measuring ourselves by faith that God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, each part has a special function, right? My toe is no better than my thumb, right? That helps me move, but my thumb helps me grab things, right? So we all have vital parts, and every one of us is special, has special features. So it is with Jesus Christ's body, uh, we are many parts, one body, and we all belong to each other. Verse 6 says, In his grace... God has given us these different gifts for doing certain things well, right? I can do better, some things better than Pastor Jay. And I, I, he, you guys sing way better than me and play music way better than me. So you guys don't want me up there, right? And it says, you can do, so if God has given you the, the ability to prophesy, uh, uh, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is encouraging others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership abilities, take that responsibility seriously. Why? Because God has given it to you. 
He's giving you this gift. Don't waste the talents that he gave you. Don't waste the talents and sit on them like the man did with the talents that his owner gave him and said, go do something with them. But he sat on them. Don't do that. And it says, and if you give a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. And verse 9 says, don't just pretend to love each other. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine, genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in your confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. And when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Amen? I gave you guys, I like just opened up the fire hose and went and just blew you away. So I'm going to break this down. This is where I'm going to be preaching mostly from today, okay? But I thought that first verse was, he's the light. And when we're, we're his church, that light goes into the community and we can't hide that light. But this, this passage is, it's a life-changing advice if you take it. It can change the way you think about life. It can change the way you think and do life together as a couple or as a single person. It's very powerful. Paul was telling his listeners to, to take an assessment, a sober assessment, to check their lives and to see where their hearts really were. And, he's, and, 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 and the trouble, why, why did he do this? Because there was trouble brewing. There was trouble in the church there. How many church, you got, how many of you guys think churches are perfect? You know how I know they're not perfect? Because we all walked in them. <laughs> so they're all going to have trouble. Right? We're all going to, every church is going to have trouble. It's how you deal with that trouble. And he's warning them ahead of time. Hey, this is happening. Let's take an assessment. And he wasn't saying, hey, you're, because cause you do this, this, and this, you're bad. No, that's not the assessment. He, we all have flaws, but we all have good things about our lives. Amen? And that's what he's saying. Find those good things and use them. Don't look at the bad, because we already know the bad is there. Look at the good. And so many people need to find the good in their lives to get past the bad. And they, this is what he's telling us. So this is why he tells us to take an assessment of our lives, not to feel hopeless, but to feel hopeful. Amen? So he wants us to see how God sees us. And we are his children. We are blessed to be his children and valued by God. We are not just some peon that we stepped on. Amen? So he placed this and, and the reason he was telling us to do this is was so we could live in unity together. One of, how many, what did I give you guys when you walked in today? Did everybody get a Lego? All right. So do me a favor. Raise up your Lego. There's a reason I gave you these. Legos are fun. I like Legos. Who said it? Tanya, right? You came in, she goes, I love Legos. I was like, yeah, me too. We used to have big boxes. There were six of us growing up. We had lots of Legos. And I used to sit on my floor and make Legos and make all kinds of houses. And I make secret chambers. But you know what the worst part was? And every Lego has a purpose and a point to it, right? They all belong somewhere. Well, this one, I'm not sure where it belongs. <laughs> I probably should have a kid do this. Uh, I know where it goes. My daughter was playing with this. There we go. See, the pastor's not that silly. All right, maybe I am. But anyways, you get my point. But every Lego, huh, this is going to annoy me. Now I've got to make it. Um, every Lego has a piece. They, every, every set has uh, it, uh, a piece that it's supposed to go to, right? What's the worst is when you're putting together, that's where the other one, see? Great example. Every Lego has a piece. And when you put something together and you don't have the piece to go with it, what happens when you get to the end? You're disappointed, right? You're like, oh, I'm missing the piece. But see, what you guys all are, and I gave you a piece, we're all different. If you notice every piece that you guys have, if you look at everybody's piece, it's different. Why? Because God has different callings on your life, different abilities, different uh, giftings. But when we put them all together, we can work as one. Does that make sense? So, and, and that's exactly how the church is. Many people put together to work in unity for God's good. 
God's purpose. Amen? So Paul explained, well, explained why this is so important. And, and that's what he's doing in this passage. It's, it's because God gifted each person, like I said, with a unique skill set. Uh, brother, what's up, man? It's good seeing you. So you play, don't you? You play the, the piano? No, I thought it was the... Oh, sorry. All right. And each talent complements somebody else's talent and giftings. A lot, you know, it's, it's, when you're alone, can you do things faster? I can do all kinds of things when I'm by myself, right? I can get a whole day's list of to-do lists by my, when I'm alone. I can get it done within hours. And that's great because I got my to-do list done and I was alone, right? And I can go fast. But when we are alone, we can go fast. But when we're together, we can go far. When we're alone, we can go fast. But when we work together, we can go far. Amen? It's easy. I, that's why impact is so, that, the name is so important to me. Because Tra Tracy and I couldn't just do this on our own. Does that make sense? It takes every individual's gifting to move impact forward. To touch the community, right? It started, I'll, I'll tell it when we have dinner, I'll the story of impact, how we got started when we eat. But it started in our house with five people on a prayer. Those five people have turned into hundreds and hundreds of people. Why? Because God is faithful. God, we can put our trust in God, right? And we all have many, many different parts. And it's the beauty. And some can preach. Some can teach. Some have generosity. I, you know, if you ask me for my shirt, I'd probably give it to you. Maybe not today because I don't have one underneath it. But, <laughs> honestly, so I, like, I, as I read this, some have leadership skills. I'm not the greatest teacher at times, right? But my wife is. She can teach anything. Sarah, who's only 11, she's got a teacher's attitude. And we see that and we let her do that, right? We all have these giftings. And whatever it is and wherever you're at in life, it doesn't matter what job you have. Or what situation, if you're out of a job, God has something for you. And when you're working, we're supposed to work for the Lord. I'm not working for man. I'm working for the Lord with whatever I do. It doesn't matter if I'm picking up garbage on the ground, which I actually do every day. I'm working for the Lord. It doesn't matter if I'm helping somebody with their finances. I'm putting their needs before my needs. I'm serving the Lord doesn't matter if I'm changing a diaper. I'm serving the Lord. I'm, I'm, we're supposed to serve the Lord all the time. And those giftings that he has given you are supposed to be serving the Lord all the time. Right? When everybody does this, the church becomes a witness of love. Because that's what Christ was doing. He was serving us all the time. And to this day, he's still serving your needs. Am I right? But he does it with love, and he does it with the power of God backing him. Amen? So my second point today is love roots us in community. Love roots us in community. And Paul explained this, explained the motivation behind the, the communal relationship that makes us our witness to the world. And it's simple. Like I said, it's about love. Love roots us in community. I'm going to use, can I use you as what I was at? Okay. Thank you. So yesterday I was invited to a fundraiser um, for Toys for Talks, right? It's your big kickoff. And to, if, you, if you know Toys for Talks, these guys are a lot of Harley dudes, right? Some are scrappy looking and they're boy, rah, 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 and rough around the edges. But what they're doing for these children raising money to get toys and gifts and bikes and all these things, they're doing out of love. I had a conversation with, with, with somebody yesterday about this one kid whose their parents are not in the greatest position in life right now, and the child is older, he's about 20, but he's got some issues, and he had a bike, and that's, he doesn't have a driver's license, but he has a bike, and he takes the bike everywhere he goes, but somebody stole the bike. And, toys for, and, and he's part of Toys for Talks, and they gave him another bike out of love. And he said, man, you're always doing good for people. You're always helping us. We love you, and we're giving. It doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from. We all can love. 
And when we do that, so in the community, what they do is once a year, December 3rd, is they go out and they have a parade and they start filling these toys to people, start giving them away to give people a nice holiday season, right? And throughout the year, you guys give too. It's not just the holiday season. It's just December 3rd is their big event that they, you know, spread the word out about it. But the organizations, then from there, we went to Miss Jean. Miss Jean, happy birthday. She's 81. And from there, so you guys gave us love, and then we went there to give you love. And, and I hope you had a great time yesterday. Your family was beautiful looking. And I, I hope uh, it was great seeing your husband yesterday and, and being in, and to be able to celebrate with you. So thank you for asking us to come. So happy birthday, girl. But it's rooted in community of love and doing things for each other and helping and, and stuff like that. And this is what Paul explains in verse 9. Don't, he said, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Some people are harder to love than others, am I right? That's me, sorry. But it says really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. We're supposed to love and honor each other. I don't always like what somebody does, but I always love them. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I was the laziest kid growing up. I hate at work. I hate, I, I did. I liked making money, but I hated working. So I found easy ways to make money. Does that make sense? Not always the best ways to make money. But when I came to the Lord and I read that passage and I read that verse that I'm supposed to be working for the Lord and not working for man, I was like, ah, oh, it makes sense now. So anything I do as work-wise, I try to work enthusiastically. Sometimes, there, sometimes we mumble, right? It's okay to mumble, but remember why you're doing it. Does that make sense? So be, it says, be, rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, be, be confident in our hope. What's our hope? That was the first week's sermon. The faith in Jesus Christ. The, the Lord sent his son to save us. To, to be able to build that bridge and take that bridge from uh, a wall and break down that bridge in that wall that, that we can cross it together and be one. Amen? That Christ came and died and, and saved us from sin. Amen? And, and that's our hope that someday we have confidence to be in eternity with him and to live in peace with him and to live and honor and give him glory all day long and serve in the house of the Lord all day long. Amen? So he says, be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When good God's people are in need, be ready to help them. We're always supposed to be ready, never sitting. We're always supposed to be able to help a hand, a help, help with a helping hand. That's a tongue so You looked up like, man, I don't know if I can say it. That's a tongue twister. Say that. Everybody say it. Help with a helping hand. Come on. How, say it three times fast. Help with a... It's hard, right? See, it wasn't just me. And, and I remember, and it says, always be eager to practice hospitality. When you come through those doors, my goal and my prayer every week is that when, by the time you leave, you feel God's presence and you feel God's love by the hospitality of the people that you just met inside this building. And that's one thing I, I, I wouldn't say I'm proud about, but one thing that I do uh, good about when guests do come and, and uh, the church members and family tells me, man, I always feel loved at your church. I always feel uh, like I'm at home. And, that, and that's the goal, and that's our, one of our missions, is to have you experience God, first off, in a way that you've never experienced his love and to walk out of here going, man, that was one of the friendliest churches I've ever been to, and I want to tell somebody about it. Why? Because that's what people did with Christ. They met, they met Jesus on streets and corners and wells and ditches and in places, on the highways that nobody wanted to walk. And by the time they left them, they had an encounter with God. And they never looked down upon. They never looked disrespectful against each other. They never looked... God, Jesus never made them feel this big 
he made them feel this big. And so by the time you leave here today, that's my goal, that you experience God's love and his presence, and you felt the love of the Lord as you left and, and you were here. Amen? When I remember uh, going to a church the first time, I went to many churches. Me and my wife were dating for a year and a half, and I was on drugs and alcohol, and I, I just would go to church with her because I, I, I was dating her, so I was trying to please her. I'll go with you. Uh-huh, sure. I could care less if I was in a church. Most of the time I was coming down or I was still drunk or high, and, and I would sit. And, I, but there, every, and every Sunday I would sit like in the back so nobody could see me, and I would just sit like this. Bored out of my mind, but I heard songs, and I saw projectors with words on them. I don't know what any preacher ever preached. I never listened to him. But I, I read the words on the screen. And those words, the Holy Spirit started using those words in my life that I had no clue. And I would leave that place a wreck. Every, almost every Sunday, I would leave church a wreck, crying like, what the heck is going on? I don't have emotions. Because I, I did not have emotions. I, I, I left my emotions at the door because of life past of what happened. So this happening to me, I was like, I, I don't cry. I don't, I don't what is it? So a year and a half goes on. I still not believe where we get married. And I Hope Church, I walked into Hope Church, and the first time I walked into this church, the people were just so nice to me. I was like, this has got to be fake. I'm like, nobody's this nice to people. Like, I'm thinking, man, how can I rob this person? Because I'm like, this, they're too nice to me. And I, we left, and I go, babe, that's not normal, is it? So I'm like, they're, they're too nice. She's like, I'm like, they like actually like, talked to me, wanted to know about me. And I'm like, that's not normal. She's like, no, they're, I don't know what world you live in, but that's, you know, and that's my goal. And, and so when we can do that to other people in the community, like when we did that fun drive, that fun drive and we raised money for the, for the building of the church, we had all this stuff, right? People gave us clothes, gave us furniture, gave us all kinds of stuff to give to this other organization that was going to pay us for it, right? We could have just took everything that we had and just got money for it. But instead, I had a lady reach out to me and say, hey, we got these refugees at our church, and they need clothes, they need furniture, they got apartments, they need jobs. And Jermaine's heart said, I will help them. And she took out of her, her time, her aunt, her day, busy day, she worked like two jobs that day, but the lady contacted her and I couldn't make it out there and Jermaine went and helped them. Why am I telling you? Because what we do here is not about us. It's about who. It's about who we can touch to the next level. Why? Because we're, we're supposed to bring God's kingdom down to earth. And if I can take away somebody's troubles for just an hour, amen. If I can give them a light that would have gave us maybe a dollar, I'd rather have light in their house and the, the light of Jesus shining in their lives. Amen? So I, I thank you guys for donating this stuff, but we donated it right back to people. Why? Because that's what we do. And we don't keep things to hold on to. We keep things to give back. Amen? So my third point, real quick. When we were... Uh, Let's see, when we demonstrate love to people around us, it changes things, right? It changes that, change that, that, that family's attitude. It changes your attitude. It changes lives, right? It makes an invisible God visible to people when we're able to help and show love. And love should go, uh, love should be our go-to, and it should play out in hospitality when we show others that. So my third point is we don't do life alone. We don't. We don't do life alone. We weren't meant to do life alone. The early church did not do life alone. The early church did everything together, and they supported each other, and they helped each other, and they loved each other. And if you go to Acts in your Bible, Acts chapter 2, or on your sheet, or on the screen, Acts chapter 2, I, this is one of my favorite. It is. It's like, it, it talks about love. It talks about community. It talks about what the early church did, and this is where we base a lot of what we do off of as a church, because this is what the church is supposed to be doing. 
says all believers devoted themselves to the apostles, to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, and to sharing in what? Meals with each other. And in a, in a little while, we're going to do the Lord's Supper together. We're going to have communion, but we're also going to share a meal together. And this is what they did. They sat, they ate, they knee to knee. And why, do, why is food so important? Because when I sit down and have a meal with somebody, what happens? Conversation. Conversation. When your mouth isn't full. <laughs> and you're spitting food on people. Yeah? But they, including the Lord's uh, Supper, and they prayed together. And a deep sense of awe came over all of them. And the apostles performed many miracles and signs and wonders. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. And that's what communion is about, believing in Christ. And, and we have open communion here at, at Impact Church, meaning if you are a believer of Jesus Christ and what God has sent down his son to us, we have no problem what denomination you are. If you call to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have communion with us. If you don't, you don't need communion. And I'm not trying to say that rudely. You don't believe in them, don't, you don't, why take communion with them? You don't need to. This was for all believers, it says. They all had everything in common, and that is what we have in common, that Christ came and died and saved us from our sins. Amen? And what they did when they were in need and needed help, what did they do? They sold property and possession to give to anyone who was in need. That's why I said when they gave, people gave us that stuff, it wasn't ours to keep. It was ours to give to people in need. And we just got benefited a little by it why we got to benefit somebody else even more. Amen? It says, Every day they continued to be together in the temple courts. They broke bread together in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying, enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. Man, when you see a church act like that, there's something special going on. There's miracles happening there's signs and wonders happening there's people living life together changing each other's lives helping each other amen and i truly hope and pray that's what you guys feel when you're with us in impact and when we partner with god's heritage and we partner with uh pastor albert and all these other organizations and because that's what we're doing we're doing acts two together we're doing church together Church is not these four walls. This is just where we come on a Sunday to assemble together like believers or like believers. But it's outside the walls that ministry actually really gets done. Amen? And that's what they were doing together. Praying, eating, talking, hanging out, fellowship teaching. They were witnessing amazing things happening. And six years isn't much. If in, in school time, six years is first grade. We're still in first grade, guys. God has so much, so much more in store for us. We're just learning our ABCs and telling time right now. God's time. God's miracles. God's place. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged of what God is going to have happen for us and with us and this community, right? Our churches, I've seen elders and widows and people being helped. And I got a video. It's a little long, but... I want to show you what impact just this year, not in the full six years. If it was six years, we'd be here uh, like hours showing you guys what we've done. But just in this year, what we have done, and the year's not e even over.
Cool, cool, cool. Oh, you can cut it. We'll watch the rest of it later. It was a long video. Like he said, We are blessed as a community, as a church. We're not the biggest church in Maywood. We're not the smallest church in Maywood. But I truly believe we have the biggest heart in Maywood. And I believe what we do truly does have an impact. And it's because of each and every one of you. And the church, it was not instituted by God to only feed people physically. Yes, we love food, we love feeding you, but that is not the purpose of the church. It's to feed you spiritually. And uh, it's easy to lose sight of that purpose. It's easy to do missions. It's easy to be on the street doing stuff, but it's, it's easy to lose your spirituality in the process of that. Because you think you have to do things in order to, to please God. And that's not what God is about. God is about grace and mercy and love and kindness. And he says, if you just believe in me, you will have eternal life. He doesn't say we have to go do anything. The only thing we need to do is to believe in him and to call upon his son and believe on the cross. And I, I, I don't want us to forget that and to lose sight of the purpose and the mission that God has for us. We were meant to do good works. But that's not how we are saved by works. We're called to help and serve a broken and lost world. And it's not easy, but there is, it is a higher calling upon our lives. Amen? In these last three weeks, and, and just in the last three weeks in our church, just so you know, we've had four pe people give their lives to Jesus Christ. We've had two baptisms. We have... Yeah. This is why I got choked. watching all that uh, and the prayers on the streets and watching people and but in the last three weeks we've had three youths go to a convention and get on fire for god and want to bring the gospel to their sports teams to their schools uh, we're starting a reading program praise god soon in a school that is christian based on a, in a public school setting um, god is moving not just here but in our community through us amen so here's the more, most important aspect that I want you to remember about that passage that I just said. It's because of the community that the witness, the witnesses that, that the church grew because of what they were doing for each other. It wasn't just because of Christ and the, and the message. It was because of the love that came behind that message. And that's why the church grows. And day after day, they were people outside the family of God who were being added and being saved. Why? Because of the living faithfulness, faithfulness of our God. That, that message of salvation is for the world, not just for Maywood. It's for the world. It's for the, the UK. It's for Jamaica. It's for um, Portugal. It's for Italy. It's for the world. Africa is not just meant to be held on to, it's meant to be spread. So at this time, we are going to take communion. And like he said, the message is the gospel is easy. We make it hard. God promised us in chapter 3 of, the, of Genesis, because of our sin, he was going to send somebody to save us from ourselves and to restore the fellowship that they had in the garden. And that was prophesied and it was, came, th came through when a, a woman by the name of Mary was betrothed by Joseph, a, a man, but was uh, we got kings in this, impregnated by the Holy Spirit, by, the, by God himself. She was born of a virgin. He was born of a virgin. Died on a cross as the word said he was going to do. Be, be hung on a cross for our sins. And upon that cross, he took our sins and went to the grave with them and fought for us. 
and said, this is for each of you. Not just one in particular person, but for each and every one of us. And he was risen from the dead. And on the third day when he rose, he said, I'm going to send a helper along the way to guide you for my believers. And that's the Holy Spirit. And if you believe that message, and you're more than welcome to have communion with us. If you did never have accepted Jesus Christ into your life and said, man, I need hope. I need a better life. I need my past washed away. I need a savior that's going to help me and put my trust in somebody other than man or drugs or woman or alcohol or jobs or money. And I need a better life. I need a godly life. But I need that relationship first to do that. If you don't have that relationship with the Lord, if you don't know the Lord in that manner, that he loves you, cares for you, has mercy for you, today's your day. And I'm going to ask everybody, there's a lot of people in this room, to bow your heads. Bow them, close your eyes, please don't look around. This is a personal moment with you and God. Because God has opened a table for everybody to have a seat at that table to eat with him. But it starts with, at first off, asking for forgiveness, repenting of your sin, believing in Jesus Christ, and then asking him to come into your life to be a part of your life. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, you've never said, Lord, I am a sinner. I repent. I believe in your Son. I believe in the, the greatness of him, the, the forgiveness of our sin. Today is the day for you to ask. And I'm going to count to three today. And, I, and I, on the third, when I say three, I want, if that's you today, and you need to make him uh, your Lord and Savior, I want you to shoot up your hand. Why? Because at the end of service, I have something special for you. And I need to know who I need to give it to. Amen? So if you need forgiveness in your life, you need hope in your life, one, and um, if you need Jesus Christ in your life and you just need a, a new creation, two, if you just need hope and you don't have it right now and you don't know where to find it, you can put it in Jesus Christ. Three, please raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for these. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you, Lord. Hey, Will, the people with their hands, can you give them a bag from back? There's, there's a couple. There's one there. No, not that bag. That bag. Yep. Raise your hands high. We got something. Anybody else? Four bags. All right, we'll get her one. Amen. One over there. Anybody else? We're going to have communion. I'm going to explain communion. Pray this prayer with me. The prayer does not save you. It's how you pray it from the heart. That's what the Lord is looking at. Give it to my brother. God. Father God, I am a sinner. I ask for forgiveness. I believe in your son. Come into my heart and lead me through the Holy Spirit the rest of the days of my life. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So how we're going to do communion today. Some of you guys, I think have a cup and a wafer. If you do not have a cup and a wafer, we, Christina's got crackers. 